Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Unconventional Gems, the channel where we play fast-paced one-shot TTRPGs with Vim and Vigor. I'm Guy from this and the Burn After Running blog, and we are playing The Between. If you haven't seen episode one of this two-shot, pause it immediately, go and watch it, or alternatively, listen to this quick recap, and you can go back <laughs> and listen to the characters we established and what we, uh, what we did there. We are in Victorian London. We have three hunters of Hargrave House that have been called to investigate a missing actress. Um, Penelope Levy has disappeared. Um, she was last seen involved with the Society Obscura, an exclusive and secretive club for photography enthusiasts, uh, based in a converted townhouse in Kensington. Um, in our previous session, our hunters did various investigations to try and find out what was happening in that townhouse and also what might be the cause of this strange artifact called the Waitley camera they have surmised is involved. It's able to send people that it takes photographs of to the fragrant void. And as it stands, um, just by the skin of their teeth, um, Gaza's character isn't in the fragrant void quite yet. Um, but in the course of avoiding being sent to the fragrant void, um, Cyrus Abernathy, one of the, um, the leads of the society and uh, his, his friend Pierre as well, who was uh, an NPC introduced, have also been sent there along, presumably, this with this actress. Um, the Between has a mystery system where the solution to the adventure, the, the mystery, isn't known in advance. And as you can see, we've got six clues um, already found that are listed um, over on the right of the screen. Um, our hunters will try and find more clues and then theorize and answer a question um, and work out what what actually happens there. The question they're trying to answer is, what circumstances will cause someone photographed by the camera to disappear? And when they've answered that question correctly and made a roll, they can then either reverse the process and bring Penelope Levy back to the world or transport themselves to the fragrant void and make contact with whatever entity is there. We'll take no bets on which um, Mr. Flintwistle would rather do if there's an evil entity out there. Um, speaking of Mr. Flintwistle, uh, we're going to introduce our players and their characters um, now. Um, if you'd like to introduce yourselves and what character you're playing, and maybe give a little previously on clip of what we saw your character do um, last session, um, starting with Gaz. Hi, I'm Gaz from Unconventional Gems, and also one half of what with the Smart ITD, the UK's premier RPG podcast. I'm playing Algernon or Mr. Flintwistle. Or well, the great Flint Whistle, as he's known on stage sometimes, is people look at him as a, a bit of a champ, perhaps, this performative stage magician who conjures things. But those who know him well know that it's that's merely an act for the true sorcery that he holds underneath it. He contacts evil things, dead things, otherworldly things, alien things. He doesn't mind. In fact, he's rather better speaking to otherworldly entities than he is real people. But last time, I guess... An iconic moment would to be seen at a dinner party in Kensington. Weirdly, the place is dressed out like some kind of Yankee Doodle Dandy nightmare with American flags and food everywhere and a motley collection of British upper class looking a little uncomfortable and wondering where's my guests as they look around. You see the rather disheveled looking Algernon as if he's been dragged through a hedge backwards, but of course it was dragged through the other world backwards nearly. And in a full length mirror behind him, as he has his small plate of volivants and is chatting amiably to a young lady, you can see another upper class man being dragged backwards into mists and clouds and shrouds, going, No! Holding on, clutching still to one of the rings from Algernon's fingers, was the last thing as he pushed the man into the other dimension. Sounds lovely. Fantastic. Shane, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us about Mrs. Williams? Hi, I'm Shane McLean. Uh, very glad to be back here. Thank you very much for having me. I am playing uh, the factotum, Mrs. Williams, a devoted servant of the Flint Whistles since old Mr. Flint Whistle was alive and now serving young Mr. Flint Whistle uh, just as devotedly. Um, Mrs. Williams is uh, a typical sort of old, old woman, floral dress, large purse, loves her tea. But as we saw last time, she has a little bit of a dark horse past. We saw that she has connections and links to uh some of the underworld and some of the um some of the less salubrious lower class denizens of london 
Um, and I think my my sort of highlight of last time was a, a, a really quite powerful scene sharing some time with Craig's character. So I won't get ahead there, but um, a, a seller as he went through a very, very difficult transformation. Indeed, indeed. Fantastic. And finally, Craig, um, introduce yourself and tell us about Mr. Larrabee, please. Yeah, Craig Shipman uh, from Third Floor Wars. And of course, I was assigned the American uh, as my character. Uh, Wild Hank Larrabee from Georgia. And uh, been here in London for a little bit and uh, had quite a run last night. Um, as Miss uh, Williams found out, uh, got a bit of a secret, uh, a curse, you might say, where depending on how the moon phases are going and then and, and my situation, um, a, a beast inside of me comes out. Um, luckily, uh, oddly, Miss Williams seemed very comfortable with the fact that I transformed into a wolf man and uh, actually uh, did something no one's been able to do, and that's somehow sate the beast, um, which uh, turned out to be uh, probably good for her. Um, uh, I have tasted uh, uh, many that have tried to do that in the past, but somehow, um, by sheer power will, she was able to, uh, keep me under control. So I'm imagining, uh, this morning, I'm a little hungover, um, been dragged a bit, um, after all that, but, uh, need to figure out what the hell is going on with that goddamn camera. Fantastic. So having met our hunters, we, um, open on, uh, breakfast being served in Hargrave House. Um, the Between has a structured play structure where you go through dawn, day, dusk, and night phases. Um, we're going to adjust it slightly to fit the one-shot format. So in the dawn phase, which is where we are now, really, um, normally we'd do XP and we'd answer dawn questions, see what would happen with that, um, and resolve any sort of playbook moves. There aren't any. We don't have any, we don't have any hanging um, Janus mask prompts to, to do, so we'll just move straight to the day. And again, in the day phase, normally another threat would appear and they would stack up with our hunters um, constantly trying to juggle um, different investigations um, to do. Fortunately for Hargrave House today, um, another threat is not going to appear. Um, they are merely going to have to continu continue to do this. Um, however, in its stead, we are going to see a little cut scene, um, and our players will know this, but obviously their characters possibly don't, but it may, may guide how they are. We, we see a, a, a sort of rosy-cheeked, Young scamp, who we re we recall from the last session as Kip Longfellow, um, one of Mrs. Williams' um, little urchins who does various jobs for him, who was assigned last night to watch the 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 um, house of the society um, for was it was it a halfpenny a farthing? Shane, it was a, it was a couple of coins of yeah. stated value. Yeah. Two farthings, one in advance, one when the job's done. Two farthings, yeah. Um, so we, we see this ruddy faced gent yeah, like nodding appreciatively and a uh, a well manicured hand um reaching out and dropping oh a, a handful, maybe six or seven halfpennies um into into his grubby fingers and, and him saying, Oh certainly I'll, I'll I'll keep an eye out, miss, and stuffing them into his britches um carefully. Um as he then runs along from there. But let's see if that, if that brings any relevance to the adventures that we're going to have now. Um, it is the day scene. The day scene um, is for you to sort of decide how you're going to continue your adventures. You can recover from condi conditions. You can try and find pretty much anywhere to investigate further. Um, the only sort of lead that we had that was left dangling, I suppose, that, 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 that appeared from last time was um, Penelope's boyfriend who originally um originally engaged you uh penelope's lover bert broadswell uh, another actor who you haven't you haven't spoken to yet um you could choose to or you could choose not to it doesn't doesn't bother me in the slightest whether he gets involved or not but just to put that out there that's that's the the thread that that hasn't been picked up yet um so as we join you around the breakfast table um what is the conversation what are your plans what are you planning to do today what's what's your kind of thing or Feel free to take over and paint a different scene, uh, maybe. If we go to Gaz first? Yeah, I'm not at the breakfast table. In fact, I'm indulging in my vice in my room, so it possibly requires someone to come and get me. Um, and I'm imagining Hank's the one to do that. 
because Mrs. Williams were busy like arranging things and making sure that my eggs are poached to the correct <laughs> keeping the catch consistency the and all that kind of stuff. So uh, as as he opens the door, he sees that my room's looking a bit of a mess. I mean, it always does, but it always like has a manicured feel to it. And it's obvious that Mrs. Williams spending the night down in the cellars meant that Algernon's room isn't as it should be, perhaps. <laughs> And you see him uh, by his day table next to the window with the lace curtains and the sun streaming through them. He's got an array of crystals around and bowls and perhaps some stuff looks like alchemical, I guess you'd say, or perhaps for some kind of transform lead to gold, maybe. But the curious thing about it is that uh, there's a crimson hue as you see him holding his hand above a Petri dish and the slow drop of blood is coming down from his own hand and rolling slowly down the trapezal side of this crystal and he kind of bends really down low to the table looks through the crystal directly at hank and says i say i've been eating american food and i'm worried about the viscosity what do you think as this bloody fluid slowly creeps down the sides of the crystal i I gotta tell you flinty um you never cease to amaze me in your ability to make things a little bit unsettling um uh, don't mean to interrupt none, but um, you know, I was a little, uh, wasn't feeling so well last night, and uh, I appreciate you going to the party. I, you you got to tell me what happened. Mm, well, regrettably, you, you stop doing the dripping thing while we're talking. Would that be all right? And I'll hold up my pocket watch in the hands. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Not until it's hit the base. I need to time it. It's taking an awfully long time this morning. It's very sluggish, much like myself. I yeah, don't think I, that I, cholesterol fuel food is helping me at all. Uh, don't don't mean to be rude, but I'm going to check out the spines on these books over here while we talk. Is that all right? Oh, that's a fascinating volume and quite apposite for it's connecting this world with the next. And last night, I was almost transported to a fragrant, perfumed place. But uh, regrettably, someone else stumbled into my way and was dragged through a mirror backwards. I think well, this might have Come again now? You... you- you broke a mirror? I don't know. Well. Oh, no, the, the mirror is perfectly intact before well, that exists on this plane, but it was a gateway to the other one, the perfume realm. I think we've heard some things of this. Someone tried to take my photograph with the Watley camera and they disappeared. A mere amateur. Pa- oh, there we go. 47 seconds. Fascinating. <laughs> yes, the Watley camera. Mm. So you saw the camera? Yes. Oh, indeed. And quite. And uh, yes, the operator, it's his wife, I think, who's the one that we should be. Paying some attention to. Interesting. 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 All right. Now, um, yeah. So I, I got I got to tell you uh, there, Flinty, I, 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 I'm reckon I need to go talk to the boyfriend. Um, I realize that, you know, he's the one that led us to, uh, on this trail, but I got sneaking suspicion he may not have said everything. So I, I think that's where I'm going to be heading out this afternoon. And, um, you know, unless you think there's some more, there's some more threads to be pulling over at the uh, townhouse. I think there possibly are, but myself and Mrs. Williams will sort that. I believe she's normally very good at getting the urchins and the west of of the streets to find us with information. I'll, I'll connect with her after breakfast. If you want to take the boyfriend, I think we should take the building and the upper class people. No, no, no offense, of course. I'm sure you are perfectly good in polite society. It's just that, well, maybe we're a bit more used to it. Yeah, and and y- y- you realize there, Flinty, that uh, normally when we become adults, we pick up after ourselves. Um, we don't always rely on servants, you know, to to do this. So oh, um, that's terribly quaint. <laughs> do you mean you don't have staff? Oh my God, that's that's oh, living like the people off the land. That must be terribly exciting for a season or two. Yes, of I'm course. Just, so. I'm gonna fl- I'm just gonna float out. <laughs> And I think at that point, uh, th- I mean, that at, at that scene, you have you have triggered the vulnerable move. Um, I, I just wanted to watch and listen to you do that. For a bit. Um, so you, you you both had an, an intimate moment with another hunter while one of you was engaged in your vice because the Flint Whistle's vice is examining his blood, of course. Um, you can say so you can both clear an appropriate condition, um, and Gaz, because it was your vice, um, you can also either stumble on a clue. And this is a Ooh. rare moment in the game where you get to invent what that clue is. It can't be mm. the full answer to the question, but you can mm. you can you can describe it, or you can invite um, another hunter to ask you about your past. Um, you have to answer truthfully, um, but not necessarily completely. And that's sort of one of the again between this this triggered moments when you're allowed to talk about your past. 
it, it unlocks an opportunity there. Or you can decide what clue you've discovered. Yeah, and I, I think in a campaign game, I'll be all for that kind of background stuff, but I feel like I've just monopolized a lot of time there on my own anyway, and the viewers are probably sick of listening to me. So let's have a clue sure, instead. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I, I think that uh, on examining my blood and looking through it at the books, or something like that, and perhaps I've got a book on photography or something like that, I realized that there might be something in the the chemicals or the coating of the photographic paper that we're missing. Mm. So there's the camera, but it's mixed with perhaps something's drawn on the coating or it's a type of chemical or there's an organic element. So there's a special substance that lines photographic paper or something like that that's perhaps a clue or I think is a clue. That's good. Uh, just to be clear, is it a special substance that does line it or it's something unusual that lines the paper? Yeah, there's, there's something not normally put on photographic paper that's there. I've just put unusual substance on the photograph. Yeah, and you can decide what that is um, when it comes to it it fits in with yeah. other things. Fantastic. Uh, meanwhile, um, downstairs in Hargrave House, there is a, a, a sharp rap on the door. Um, this is Williams. I, sh I shall uh, answer it. Uh, wearing another similar but not identical floral dress buttoned right up, but with a, an apron over it. Uh, with a little bit of flour and perhaps a little uh, spray of fat from cooking the uh, sausages to accompany just perfectly poached eggs. Uh, Mrs. Williams will busy up to the door, with a, a slightly a slightly annoyed expression on her face. Um, and yes, our and house. You find um, you find standing in front of you a smart gentleman in a tweed coat, manicured moustache. Um, pipe smoking in his uh, um, who says ah excellent the house is, awo is awakened awakened um, allow me to introduce myself and he pulls out a um, pipe and says uh, D.I. Pettigrew Scotland Yard um, I wonder if you uh, you would know any of the masters of the house might be in here to assist us in a matter yes the master of the house is currently robing for the day ah fantastic you can go and get him then Absolutely. Just wait here and I'll close the door. Um, <laughs> is it raining? Um, yeah, it's like definitely so. it's raining. It's <laughs> raining, yeah. Drizzling slightly. London, yes, of course. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Um, you, uh, as, you slow the, as you slow the door, um, you notice his foot go out to do it. It says, uh, Madam, may I come in? Do you have a warrant, Detective Inspector? Warrant? Merely assisting Scotland Yard in its inquiries. Um, in which case, allow me to assist you. I shall pass him an umbrella. <laughs> Please move your foot. Okay, I'm gonna. Um, I think this is actually. I know. I, I know. He tried it. I'm, I'm gonna put the move in here. Actually. Okay. Um, because it's, there's a potential for him to just like leave you. This, he might just leave you alone. Um, in terms of that, or he might cause some more trouble in here. You're probably gonna like get him to go and leave you alone for a bit, but. What he does after that is, is possibly what's at stake. So let's do it properly, though. This is the day move. Okay. Um, and I think probably you're rolling with composure, I think. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Um, what are you afraid will happen if you fail or lose your nerve with D.I. Pettigrew? Um, I am afraid that he will enter the house and perhaps uh, see something that will cause him to become suspicious of the master of the house. Yeah, I mean, I mean potentially he won't. In fact, let's just do it. He's, he's not going to. You're going to be successful, but in the course of it, he'll see something from yeah. within the hallway. That that seems to be the thing. For it. Okay, do you want to roll your move? Uh, yes, indeed. And that is an, an eight. Fantastic. So your actions would leave you vulnerable. Uh, yeah, I think. I think. I think as you hand him the umbrella. His hand goes out momentarily. He says, uh, that, that, that won't be necessary. I see how this is. I shall return tonight with a warrant then, ma'am. This is how you insist on playing it? Very well, Detective Inspector. Thank you for your... And he brought along to interview other people that were at the party last night. Um, but he is going to return with a warrant at some point. Dramatically appropriately for that. Um, so we started discussing what your character's going to do. Just go into sort of player mode. 
Um, so, Craig, you're going to se- seek out the boyfriend? Is that what you're... Yeah, I'm going to try to find uh, Mr. Broadswell. Um, and Shane and Gaz, are you going back to the house? What's your... I shall accompany uh, young master Clint Whistle wherever he goes, having neglected him yesterday, and see what he got himself into. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> so I, I think I want to seek out some of the other guests. I, I, I did some schmazing last night. I interviewed a lot of people. There's probably other people either had the photograph taken or wanted to, and they will have staff who have other ideas. So we're, we're going to find out another important guest. I'll speak to them and... Hopefully, Mrs. Williams can speak to their staff, and between us, we can come up with some information. Fantastic, that, fantastic. You're happy with that, Mrs. Williams? Um, are you going to try and link it with Kip as well, Mrs. Williams? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. you know, if he's doing what he's paid for, he'll be in the vicinity of the house anyway. Yeah, still hanging around for it. Okay, so let's cut to... Let's do Craig first, maybe, with the... Um, Actor, so you're able to um, divine where um, Bert Broadswell would be. Um, he, after all, left a left an address. He contacted you initially. I think you can find a um, find his um, his flat that he um, lodges in. He's an actor, so during the day he's sort of lazing about and, and <laughs> at ease. Um, I think when you um, when you head up to receive him, he uh, we don't have to do the we don't have to do the sort of knocking on the door and being let in kind of whole thing. This is established that he probably does want to talk to you anyway. Um, I think as you go in, this is a, a, a nice little pokey bedsit flat, but it's been well appointed. I just have a paint the scene question for you, Craig. Um, how can you tell that Bert Broadswell maybe isn't the um, isn't as wealthy as he is is making out? Maybe isn't as successful as he's making out. I think that I uniquely recognize when things are supposed to look nicer than they really are. If you look at my clothing, you can see that I'm doing the exact same thing that he's doing. So it's small things like the picture frames. Um, The uh, bookshelves are not full of books. They've got spaces that he's tried to, you know, make it look like it's a design choice, not the fact that he can't afford books to fill a bookcase. Um, uh, uh, Probably another small thing is... uh, the uh the quality of the tea um it's it's definitely the 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 cheaper brand of tea versus what i'm used to watching my friend drink uh at hargrave house yeah i mean there's, there's a close-up of a chipped um cup as well i'm sure that exactly that he turns around so you can't see it and he takes the chipped one so you can't see it. so so i'm uh i'm glad you've come um mr uh you can call me Hank. Uh, just call me Hank, um, uh, Mr. Hank. Yes, I'm. I'm glad yeah. that you've glad that you've come. It's terribly, uh, terribly tricky moment. Uh, I, I sent you the picture. Tell me how go your investigations. Will my dear well, ever be back to me? Well, they're, they're going well. I think we're getting close to ciphering out what what, what all's going on here. Reason reason I'm coming by here, um, um, Mr. Broadswell, is. It's been our experience that sometimes there's inform there's there's little details that you don't think matter none, but a lot of times they can be the key to us, you know, solving this situation. So I, I'm wondering whether you know is, when you think about your pretty little lady there, can you give me an idea? Maybe maybe something that was a little odd leading up to her 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 vanishing on you. Something maybe you didn't mention um, when you reached out to us. It's, oh, it's it's difficult to to, to remember. Um, I've been just beside myself with with grief. Um, she got involved in the society um, despite a flourishing acting career. Um, we met on the stage. You see, uh, she was playing Rosalind, I the Bumpkin William, if you can imagine that. Um, she was radiant. Funny, funny enough, I can utterly radiant. I never got the lead, but I did manage to become her Orlando in life, and. Uh, now she's gone without a trace. Oh, will she ever be returned to me? And he, he strikes a, a sort of silhouette against the window. And that, it says, I, I never knew why she got involved in that. Uh, so I, I, I've, I've had a look through for any, any details. Some of her effects are still about the flat. You're welcome to look through them if you'd like. Yeah, I would. I, can I ask you a side question? You know, being an outsider, only been up here in uh, uh, fancy London for for a few years. Here, what is it with with y'all using ten words when one would work? 
Well, it's merely a, a, a sign of good graces and good edgy, you know, you have to communicate well there. Yeah, it's, it, oh, it's a lot, a lot of gabbing, a lot of gabbing. But yeah, if you can just pull me over to her room, I'm going to poke around a bit, Um, you know. He says, yeah, but it, it point, points over to um, maybe a piece of her effects that he's obviously looked through um, before and has has seen what's there. You, so that that was where I found the uh, the photograph that I sent. It was the easiest thing to do. I'll I'll let you um I'll I'll try and stop um gabbing. Was it while you commence your search? Then yeah, slap slap slapping gums is what we talk what we call it here in Georgia. Um, but one, one last quick question now. Um, you get involved at all with 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 this obscure thing? You ever that, get uh, get over there? Absolutely not. Decadent lectures in there. I wouldn't be seen dead there. Quite the most odd people. Penelope to- told me about it, but I never knew why she... Uh, but have you seen some of the filth they parade out in those photography clubs? I was of a uh, mind to put my foot down and tell her to not go. Oh, if only I had, and then my dear Penelope would be back with me now. Um, so you've got an information move to look through, yes. the, um, to look through her effects. Um, I think it's probably reason. That's what I'm thinking too, with reason. So I've got a zero in reason, so it'll be a straight roll. Yeah, just make the roll. We don't need to. Matt, consequences. Right. Eight seems to be the number today. Okay, there's a complicated. Um. Yeah, there is a complication here. So I think that yeah, as you're looking through her effects, there's some cheap jewelry. It's similar to to Mr. Broadswell's. This is um. Not somebody in the greatest of, of wealth or success. Yeah. And you're, as you look through the clothes and effects and jewelry, your hand hits something warm. And there's a small um, glass pyramid that, as you pull it up, is warm to the touch. Um, but as you look, as you just sort of examine it, completely clear. Um, and the warmth does. Seems to sort of fade a little bit when it's in your hand, but it's a definite sort of warmth in there. As you look in it, the face that stares back, um, you see Penelope's face back from it against the glass, again, screaming. So I'm going to give you a clue and a condition. Got it. Um, so you're going to get a small glass pyramid. If I can spell, if I can spell glass, that is. Hmm. <laughs> Everyone's going to please don't check all my other spellings. That would be yeah, embarrassing. I'm not confident about orrery, for instance. <laughs> so yeah, you um, so you recover that, but um, you see her eyes um, are into. It. I'm going to give you a condition. Um, I think I'm going to go a bit a bit further than that. I think you've been. I think you're drawn to the void. Mm. And see beyond there. There are other shapes in there, but then it goes, and the warmth fades, and you're just left with this pyramid. Um, and at that point, I think we'll cut to um, Mrs. Williams and Mr. Flintwistle. Where's the first stop on your um, tour of London as you rattle along in presumably a cab where you're going? You get out um, a bit ahead of the building and stop in with Kip first. Be armed with his information, we knock on the door. Does that meet with your approval, Mr. Flintwistle? Yeah, I imagine there's something about you saying, oh, this is where I get your uh, the, the special mustard that you like. And yeah. by, by the mustard shop, there's a little alleyway where there's an energy period around the corner. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Use that. I'm, I'm busy asking why we're stopping here and not nearer the thing, but oh, the special mustard, of course, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. To walk 30 yards. <laughs> yeah. I'll sort of gently, <laughs> gently pat his knee. You just wait here, Mr. Flint, which sort of... Just a moment. He says, all right, all right, auntie. Ah, Kip, still smoking those horrible things, are you? He says, Ooh, I've been, I need it, I need it. I've been up all night, I have. Keeping an eye on that house. There was a party there last night, you know. What's there? You're such a good boy. Tell me more about it. Well, lots of people coming and going. Got some flashing in there, like photography or something. Hmm. Okay. And, and I think in terms of what else he saw, it's probably an information move. Now, as established, this is done with advantage because... Um, if he's used, you can do that. So I, I think it is reason, because it's sort of Kip's reason, but you're rolling for it. 
But you're going to have advantage, so you can roll three dice and yeah, no take problem. Two I'll go ahead and do that. Roll that, and then oh wow, um, thirteen. Hmm. Oh, 13. <laughs> wow, wow. Um, he he commences this lengthy um, description mm-hmm. of almost everything that happened last night in the party, but from the point of view of a very nosy urchin um, <laughs> climbing drain pipes and like peering in and trying to see what happened, um, and then embellished somewhat um, by, of course, you know, to, to tell you how dangerous it's been and how how exciting it was um, there. Um, and then he says something. He says the most most unusual thing, Auntie. I was I was dozing in there, looking around, seeing what there was. Some some of the whenever people walk past with with dogs and stuff, I noticed how they shied away from that whole house, wouldn't go near it. And when I was climbing the gutters and stuff, rats is horrible things, isn't they? They bite you. Not a trace of a rat anywhere near that house. It were as if the animals shy away from it, couldn't face to be near it. Once I realised that, it gave me right shivers, that did. Indeed. Well, you've been a good boy, Kit. Why don't you run along and get some rest? And then I'll give him two more farthings, my general. Okay, they clink heavily as he drops them into his purse. That's why I thank you, Auntie. Uh, you're always good to me. And, uh, Kip, just remember, um, I didn't ask you about this. Of, of course not. Cheek. Mum's the word. <laughs> Auntie's the word, surely. <laughs> <laughs> right, with his nosy cheeks, he scampers off there. Uh, rat like with the clink of coins um, <laughs> rattling down the street. See that. Um, Excellent. Do you want to go back into it so you can proceed? Yeah, so I'll, um, I'll quickly purchase a small tub of uh, mustard <laughs> and uh, rejoin young Mr. Flint. Excellent. So, guys, you were going to try and find another guest. Was that your plan? Yes. And I think just by observing the carriages that have gone up and down and perhaps someone leaving late, I, I witness uh, uh, an artist's muse. So, yes, um, Jessica Chumley of the Harrogate Chumleys, I see entering her carriage and being taken back. And although I know that Carstairs is a notoriously tight-lipped footman who will be driving her back, I have great confidence in Mrs. Williams to be able to prize pearls of wisdom like an oyster from him. So we're going to follow him back, and then when she's... Returned back to her house, which is probably 400 yards down the street or something. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna, we're going to make a surprise visit. So she's not had a chance to fully relax or anything like that. It's a little off kilter. And Carstairs, I know, will also be like struggling to, to get himself together. Yeah. So I'm picturing that Carstairs is a sort of, sort of door of a man, like expressionless, mm. featureless, absolutely no humor within him whatsoever. Um, and, Probably Jessica Chumley is a, a fairly minor up and coming ingenue who not surprised that she's got involved in this kind of thing. And um, maybe it's while while Carstairs is helping her down from the carriage that you mm. happen upon the scene. Um and she says, Oh, oh, is that is 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 that do, do I know? Is it is it is it Algernon? Indeed, Jessica. I had a terribly good surprise to see you on this beautiful morning. You look positively radiant. Oh, th- 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 thank you. I'm, I'm afraid I had rather a late night. I'm just heading home to uh, rest and have some strong sweet tea. Oh, is that a sparkle in your eyes? So is it the sun or is it something else? And I'll start doing like weird mesmerism stuff and pulling out a pendant on a chain. Um, I mean, that sounds like a... Sounds like a day move to me. <laughs> to try and get that. Yeah. Um, so weird mesmerism stuff on a chain. Yeah. Um, sensitivity, I think. Um, sure. Is, why is, not? is your aim to try and get her get, get so, a chance to talk to her and yeah, get an invite into the house, sit down right. with her, get information with her over a cup of tea, and talk about stories of crazy nights we've had and stuff like that. Cool. Cool. Uh, what are you afraid will happen? If I will lose your nerve. 
Uh, I'm afraid that not only will she clam up, but then she'll she'll tell everybody else that I'm around digging for information, and it'll go through the uh, underground scene of gossip that I'm snooping around after famous people and what they've been up to at late at night. Yeah, yeah. Well, and Carstairs is it, it is. We get a flashback to Carstairs um, sharing a drink with some of the policemen from the off-duty coppers from yeah. Scotland Yard as well. That's the kind of bars that he goes into, isn't it? Yeah. Excellent. So uh, probably with sensitivity, because you are using your mesmeric powers. Uh, yes. And I'm, I'm casting around. Dice. The right I didn't know which had the things that I'm like, yes. That's, so what I'm going to use as well to get a bit of advantage, just to, like, I think the first part of it seems very stock and nobody's really surprised by it. It's the usual trick. And it's when I pull out the jar with the preserved froggy pickling liquid, that's when everybody suddenly stops. So there's a, a discompobulation, and that's when I can strike with my tree mesmerism. Uh, three threes, brilliant. So I'll get a total of eight. Okay. Your actions will leave you vulnerable. Um, you can choose to back down or go through with it. I mean, the, the obvious answer is that... Um, uh, yeah, you, you can achieve that, but I think in the course of this mesmeric power, you've att- maybe attracted quite an audience. Mm. Yeah, um, I'm happy about that. Can we use masks on behalf of another character? Um, not your move to do it. The only time you can do it is with the question. We all have to do it to do it. Right. Thank you. Um, but you can, w- when this happens afterwards, you can, you know, we c- we can have another move to try and sort it. So I think quite a crowd has gathered, um, and you sort of realise that the. <laughs> The jar with the pickled frog in um, is going to be noticed by this. Maybe not in the polite society gossip, but certainly the um, the good people of Kensington are going to know that you've been around and and, and poking your, your nose in a little bit here. This be some exposure for you. You want to go through with it still? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm going to go through with it anyway. There's no such thing as bad press. Excellent. She says, "Oh, that's oh, I'm entirely overwhelmed. You must come in and take tea with us." Algen and like offers a hand. Carstairs rolls his eyes, the one sort of emotion that we've seen him um, do so far. Um, Mrs. Williams, how do you respond to all of this? Yeah, so noticing the crowd and the interest, I'll um, <laughs> sigh ever so slightly and then uh, in a, almost a stage whisper so people can hear, say to, uh, to Carstairs, Roger, young Master Algernon is very clueless and sweet on Jessica, you should just simply do Is she as bad as he? To try and convince the crowd that this is simply just him trying to impress somebody that sweet on. Brilliant. I mean, that's that sounds definitely like a move. <laughs> yeah. um, and that will be with um, presence, You're trying to um, solve the problem. The, what are we afraid can happen? <laughs> uh, I'm afraid that that's just going to make the gossip even worse. And <laughs> everywhere we go, um, young Mr. Flintwistle will be met with interests and queries and won't be able to do anything discreetly. Uh, exactly, yeah. It'll, it'll make it worse, in fact. Go for it. Make the roll. Uh, that is a five. Um, so I am going to use the mask. I'm going to use a, a mask to uh, increase that success. Uh, and I think I'm going to use a mask of the past. Great a flashback to my young adulthood before you were a servant that shows your most significant professional triumph. So we go back years, many years, Mrs. Williams not being a young spring chicken, to a time when she was a lawyer's clerk out in the country somewhere. A small town lawyer represents the people. Whichever idyllic bit of the green and pleasant land is said. Um, and she uh, is employed simply to collate paperwork and complete it. And then one day, as she's going through things, she's realized there's been a terrible, costly mistake, something that could affect not just the lawyer's reputation, but the fortunes of one of the landowners. And uh, mm-hmm. quite nervously, uh, she was definitely much more of a nervous person back then. Um, uh, Miss Fitz, as she was, takes the, um, takes the paperwork to, to her boss and haltingly presents this to him. But instead of getting the scorn that she expects, uh, she is uh, congratulated, and uh, it raises her est- it raises her esteem, uh, and eventually earns her the promotion that makes her the personal secretary. And and with that, that boosts it up to seven to nine. So, 
I think you've succeeded in persuading the crowd that that's the case, um, but possibly not Carstairs, who um, um, looks at you and says, um, uh, you'd better come in um, and grips your arm with quite a tight like, hold to sort of march you in um, and have a word with you. And that's slightly would go with it. Go for it, go for it. And so you are. You have access to that. And um, maybe we'll go back and see what our Americans up to now. Um, so you're still at, at um, Bert Broadswells. You found the the glowing uh, glowing pyramid. Um, it says um, a, 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 anything there. Uh, apologies for gabbing. So you see me slide the pyramid into my jacket pocket. And go. Nah, sorry, man. I, it, it doesn't, sir. It doesn't look like there's much going on here. But I'm going to keep you updated uh, on our process. And and if you think of something, you know, you just come by the house and you let us know any any particular details that uh, that, that 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 could potentially help us. And 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 just to just to be clear, you in no way ever got over to that townhouse, right? You never got involved with the with the photographers. Like think, I need you to really think on it now. Absolutely not. <laughs> right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let myself out. Excellent. Um, what, what are you planning to head up for that? We've got maybe a, a little bit of the day left, and then we'll, we'll look at it. I think I want to find um, some a, a part of town that I think that uh, Algernon is probably more familiar with than I am, but I, I, I need somebody to look at this pyramid. I need to, so I want to find some sort of trinket house, uh, fortune teller, somebody who potentially could look at this thing and be able to tell an antiquer, something that, yeah. uh, something close, uh, that I want to present this, uh, pyramid to, to get an idea of what the hell I'm looking at. Excellent. I think, I hope you're okay with this. I think that locating a fortune teller or antiquer, um, for you, probably, as, as you would surmised, Algernon could probably find that. And um, for you, that, that might be a move to not end up being sure. released as a tourist. Um, so yep. we're, we'll, we'll maybe, um, yeah, so you're looking around, you, you, maybe, and maybe asking, <laughs> as, as in London, you're asking passers by and so on. <laughs> People are shocked, you know polite, anybody can see the future? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Polite but shocked. We see like eyes from like alleyways looking out, looking suspiciously at you, marking you from that. Um, I think this is a day move. And <laughs> what are you afraid will happen if you fail or lose your nerve? Um, I'm afraid that I might lose a clue. That I get such bad information that we end up losing one of our clues because I'd be getting thrown off the scent. So I, oh, I, 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 if I fail this, whoever tells me this information, I buy in like a, like a yokel and what they're telling me. And I think it makes uh, our investigation even harder. I really like that. Yeah. 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 I think that's good. Um, so asking around, trying to find this place. Um, I'd like your reason or presence. It's, it's up to you really, which one? Well, saying I got a plus two in presence, I think I'm going to be using uh, yeah, yeah. wild <laughs> Hank's charm here. Go so I'll it. be at a plus two. Go for it. That would be an 11, nine plus two. Wow. So we were born at night, but not last night. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Um, So, yeah, we, we, we see a a, a dubious little um, alleyway um, with a little sign up there and a a a veiled woman um, behind you says, uh, I uh, help you. She's got um, Madame Le Bleu is her name. That's above there. Um, and there's a sort of attempt at putting on a French accent that almost immediately drops when she realizes that, that you're an American and unlikely to be fooled by anything like that. Says, can, I, uh, can I help you read your, read your lines? Actually, actually, Miss Bluff, it's all right with you. Um, my my great second aunt gave me a, a little bit of a trinket that I'd, I'd love to get get you to look at and see if you can't tell me a little bit about it, maybe a little bit of history, if you've seen anything like it before. And, and what am I tied to? Um, uh, I feel like my my third great aunt who gave it to me. Um, she she my cousin. Uh, I, I what I meant to say. Um, she I think she's trying to send me a message uh, by by willing this to me. 
And uh, I miss my grandma. So when she gave this to me, I, I just I just would really like to understand what she what she was trying to tell me, being my cousin and all. A gift from a grandmother. Gr- uh, and my aunt, grandmother, cousin. Yes. It's, it's, yes, ma'am. Yeah, I, I understand. I understand that she takes the uh, thing in there. It's always a grandmother or an aunt or a cousin. <laughs> and looks at it. I think, I think it's an information move that you're making here. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, yeah trying to see it. if I can't p- peel another clue out of this. Go for it. Yeah. Um, I think this, maybe, I think I might make your roll with sensitivity because we've I can see that. established that this thing is probably magical. Um, and so it's whether she will recognize that herself. Yep. So this will be a straight roll. I've gotten uh, zero in sensitivity d- despite being a man of the wolf. Uh, I rolled a six. Um which isn't quite enough. So I think I will be putting on a mask if that is all right. Okay, yeah. So how we sh- we'll do it properly this time because how we should have done it before is Correct. we should have played it out and then we won't. Um, yep. So apologies, Shane, that you didn't see, get to see your characters and failure. Or you can imagine it, I'm sure. Um, I think she, I think we see her take it and she says, um, Oh yes, I have. Uh, I have something um, like this here, um, and she sort of turns away, um, and then we see a a cover pulled off a mirror, a full length mirror that's all down, um, the sort of behind you, sort of at an angle. We just see that pulled off. And we see just floating within the mirror, um, Cyrus, the uh, the man from last night. Um, it just reaches out, and you are, of course, drawn to the void. So we, we see uh, Mr. Larrabee, you back into it, and then pff, there's a photographer's flash. And a little How am I going to pay you now? <laughs> <laughs> Um, but you put a mask on. So I do. I'll, I'll put out a mask of the past. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Um, so you don't have to do that. You don't have to, do, and you don't have to do the uh, flashback just yet. We can work sure. that in where it is. Okay. So she takes it, um, and she um, she looks through it. She says, um, she "says I've I've seen this." Um, before um these are hundreds of years old um your grandmother gave you it you said my cousin yes ma'am this um this is a genuine antique looks like a mere trinket that's been made by a, a glazer somewhere here but this is um you see the the etchings here this is this is hundreds of years old old glass polished to a sheen. Um, I would be very careful with this. This has existed far longer than any of us. Um, And so in a sort of roundabout way, the clue that you're getting is um, because we know that the pyramid is is linked to the, um, the camera, we've got evidence that the Waitley camera existed before cameras. Ooh, nice. Um, and I think that, and as you, I think we maybe see the mirror still mm-hmm. um, as she steps back as you're making to leave, and we see um, Cyrus floating in it and reaching out to you. But then there's the slam of the door and you're gone, and you don't get That's great. drawn into the void. Um, Yes, yes, the Harrogate Chumleys. Um, you remember Algernon? Should I call you Algy? But you can call me whatever you like, dear. Oh, I'm so tired. It was such a such a party last night. I can't. Were you there? I can't recall. Yeah, me neither. The whole <laughs> night a blur. For the society. Oh, do take some tea. Um, what's your line of questioning here, Gans? What are you trying to get out of it? So I've kind of got this theory about powders or a substance or something like that and i'm aware that she is a fiend for such things so that maybe there's a connection or maybe she's seen someone 
messing with someone then and, and assumed it was drugs, but there'll be something to do with this camera or the, the operation they're in. So I'll be asking her along the lines of, seems to be out of laudanum, dear girl. And blah, 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 blah. And what, what have you seen? I've heard there's a new thing on the scene. And some people are calling it fairy dust, but I don't believe in such things. But have you seen... Did you, did you speak to Rupert? I heard Rupert's got a line on this, so, so I'll just be like talking about all the people she'll have met at the party that I might not know about yet, and who might have some kind of uh, fingers in pies of whatever substances have been moved around and been delivered to the house for these special camera operations. Lovely, lovely. And you don't you don't have to for the information move, but I like I like how you've given me a bad consequence as well for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, excellent. So uh, with presence, do you want to make the information move? Yeah, let's try. Let's try. Presence is all right. <laughs> I, could, I could use my old three bed threadbare teapot in here, but that's that <laughs> you know. So I'll just, I'll just roll and see what happens. Uh, I get a total of eleven. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, you do indeed. Um, I think I'm going to shift this slightly. Um, in terms of there's a. There's a long and quite confusing list of people who may or may not have been out of the party. Um, mm -hmm. And it's quite clear that she is, yeah, many of the things that you describe she's indulged in, and most of them last night. And so it's pretty hard getting any sort of sense um, out of her. Um, but your conversation is interrupted by um, Carstairs coming in and saying, uh, Mom, are you sure we should be keeping this? And he puts a cage down in the middle of the room and pulls the sort of thing away. Um, and within this, like, gilded cage, there's an albino peacock. Um, so that is the clue that you have found. Excellent. <laughs> Says, I really think we should perhaps return it to the house and whence it came, I don't. Sh I'm not sure how we look after these things carefully. How, how how can you not? Seriously, what was your childhood like? Do you have no pets? <laughs> give it here. I can quite assure you that my 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 staff have know exactly what to do with this. Why? Yes, yeah, so this is of course. It's from the domain of Yucca Yatta, and it's a, a, a Coidata Aves Gualiformes, I'm quite sure. Mrs. Williams will know what to do. <laughs> well, you know, you know so much about things. <laughs> I see, I, I know. It's probably a, a Pavo Christasus genus. Um, but don't do give it here. What do you do? Cast theirs, get away. You're alarming it. Can you not see it's getting hormonal? <laughs> Just by your mere looming presence, cutting it. Move your shadow away from the light, and I'll, I'll insist upon taking the bird away to look after it properly. Excellent, excellent. Uh, me meanwhile, um, at the back of the house, um, Carstairs has to momentarily leave you with a cup of like weak tea, Mrs. Williams. Is there anything that you're trying to do while you're there? Well, I mean, if um, if Jessica has had a long relationship with uh, the society, then there must be things laying around in chambers. Obviously, I am going to need wander off and use the facilities. So perhaps I should get lost. Uh, and I am going to uh, shamelessly ransack her chambers. For <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Give us an information move with um, reason. Search. Okay. So. I roll with a plus one is 10. Excellent. Um, so let me just consult our list of clues and work out what we could. Yeah, so we, we, we see Mrs. Williams sort of walking down the corridor, um, looking innocent and failing, and then just darting quickly into one of the side chambers, which is Jessica's sitting room, just walking around, lifting things up, just looking under them, putting them back down, kind of almost like Mr. Bean does. Places. <laughs> Sneak yeah. thief, she is not. Um, what you find, the un I mean, you find all kinds of sort of inconsequential um, tidbits and things that Carstairs hasn't tidied up. Um, but you do find, um, folded in a book that she's reading, 
um, is a piece of paper that as you open it, it's a highly detailed anatomy chart. Oh, sure. uh, I shall do absolutely the right thing and not put that. And uh, <laughs> secrete it away into my voluminous handbag and return to the kitchen ahead of me. Excellent. Upstairs. I, I'm going to suggest that that might be a point to sort of cut back and sort of end the day phase. And it might be quite a nice point for us to have a little break as well. Um, when we get back, you might want to, because you've now got 12 clues um, to pick from. You might want to try and actually solve, like, answer that question and then maybe try and resolve it in the night phase. So we're going to cut away and have a quick 10-minute break. Um, for listeners and viewers at home, it'll be over in a matter of seconds. Um, so while we do that, feel free to take advantage of that time to like and subscribe so you don't miss any more of our unconventional gems. Um, goodness on it. We'll see you in a few ticks. Welcome back to the Waitley camera, the between. Um, when we left, our investigators, our hunters, had found a veritable panoply of clues that you can see all listed on the right of your screen, um, including highly detailed, detailed anatomy chart and albino peacock, which Mr. Flint Whistle, I believe, has taken with him. Um, yes, back to his lodgings. Not, it's not going to be a clue. That's now my pet. So okay. <laughs> Rather not use it as a clue. We'll keep it there. Um, it is dusk is 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 setting though, and so we're getting towards the um, the dusk phase of the day, um, and we're going to see that the hunters. Um, meeting together again to take their sort of evening meal in uh, in Hargrave House, um, and as we see them, um, there might be a chance for them to discuss what they found, maybe theorise and think about how they could maybe answer the question of what circumstances caused someone photograph to disappear. So I imagine we're in the uh, maybe the, the drawing room before dinner um, as you're sitting around. Um, and who who leads the conversation? Anyone step in? All three of you are there for this this scene, which hasn't I don't think has happened before. Um, <laughs> yeah, all three if of you are there as you discuss this. If it's all right, uh, maybe the two of you are already in in the in the room, and I'll come in and just casually toss the pyramid at uh, Plenty and uh, say, yeah, so. I think I think we're a lot closer to figuring out what the hell's going on. Uh, so I found found this little trinket here. Learn a little bit about its connection to to some sort of other place, mm -hmm. and uh, I think I think we need to start start piecing together. You know what exactly can cause somebody to uh, to have their picture taken by this camera and then end up in, in another spot. Um, I, I picked up a few clues. Curious to know what you've put together. Oh, terribly interesting. One to the touch. There's still some power in it. This is, of course, one of the shards of the soul of Quetzalcoatl, which is used for blinding flashes of light and communion with the other side. Mm, very interesting. I wonder if this is some component of the camera to perhaps produce that unusual flash. How interesting. Come, Mrs. Williams. Let's get the other Kutraman we have established. And those tomes, bring them. Let's scatter them across the table and discuss what's going on. Very well. So... I want, so I think, I think I like your, I think that's a good use of the pyramid. Um, I think the next thing that might happen is I pull that piece of quartz out that I stole. And um, I think as I bring it closer to the pyramid, the warming increases. So they, they kind of activate and interact with each other. So the combination of the pyramid along with the, the quartz seems to be uh, a, a, a power pong back and forth or maybe a battery of some sort. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll quickly pull a book from underneath it as the page starts to brown and smoke as the crystal heats up. I'll uh, I'll grab the cage the peacock is in. Uh, I'm just going to remove this, uh, Mr. Flint Whistle. It seems Toby here is being agitated by whatever is happening between the quartz and the pyramid. I should yes, keep him in your study. Can't tell whether it's the cocking wood pigeon that's causing agitation or the magical effects they're having here. But yes, yes, best to keep him out of the way. Well, my young, my young boys did note that any who walked a dog asked the society's headquarters had the dog shy away. I think Toby's reaction here proves. That. 
yeah, some sort of subsonic um, wavelength of some sort that scares away the animals. So the camera and the activity doesn't care about being humans necessarily. It's trying to draw the life force of any living thing. Mm. Um, what do you think that substance is um, that you found the, the, on the um, contact paper? Some talk of ectoplasm for ghosts and the gauche things. It's nothing so lurid. But there is something left behind when there's been a transference from one side to the other. Of course, the perfumed void is little more than powders in a vast expanse. So there's not the same mass to transfer. But once someone's taken from here to there, the dust, the, the residue, moss, there's something that's swapped back the other way as a residue. And Mr. Finn Whistle, do you remember that, that Schwami that visited some years ago who talked about the link between the bodies within the body and without? I wonder if this anatomy chart and these celestial realms diagrams can be linked together in that way. Is somebody try, Are some people predisposed to think to this other place? Mm, Vakanda did mention there was something to do with the arrangement of celestial bodies that matched the chi and chakras within the human. And when the stars were correct and a person was born under the correct signs, then indeed there was some kind of link. He did go on about that at some length, I believe. I obnoxiously am going to avoid eye contact with Miss Williams and go, I've heard that, that, that there are going to be a connection between the powers of the moon and, and things like this. Um, mm -hmm. I've heard that. I had a friend tell me that once, and I'm just, I'm very obnoxiously not looking you in the eyes. Yeah. Um, you, you know, Mrs. Williams doesn't force the issue and actually seems to soften slightly when you. Is it the, not not our moon, though, of course. It's the moons of the other celestial bodies. They're the important ones, right? Yeah, nothing special about our moon. I think that's 100% right, Flinty. Yeah, there's no powers in our moon. Yes, I saw a whole lot of nonsense about transformations and how the moon. Dave, Dave, <laughs> Dave, 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 <laughs> little little, little children's stories, yeah, little, little fables. But there are powers in, like, in words. Not, and what is that language that we found? I'm not a learner. It seems some kind of amalgam or precursor. I don't think it's a language that's spoken by anyone, certainly not with just one tongue anyway. It would appear to me you need several and perhaps a non Euclidean one. Mm. Or perhaps if you've assembled enough people to speak in unison, it would be as if one voice is speaking it. And you would need a trained actor, singer, such forth, to get the pitch exactly right. So it seemed to be one voice. Oh, very interesting, Mrs. Williams. A keen observation, if I might venture. Well, I, I think spent, leaning into what I'm... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, well, I've spent enough time around the Flint Whistles to embrace the unusual. I, I think, and this ties to the one, the mask that I put on uh, last session, completely out of character, very odd, very odd. I know exactly the etymology of that language and I break it all down for you, which I would imagine is a little shocking when I've been, you know, doing this whole, 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 whole kind of act. And all of a sudden I'm like, well, actually this is part Byzantine here. And you can see that that letter there combined with the Egyptian and just like a whole nother side of, of wild Hank comes out. <laughs> if I well, my dear, my dear Hank, so someone did say to me, there's a whole different side to you, a side that would, I would find shocking and revelatory. And now I understand what it is. It's your mastery of old languages. Oh, no, it, it, I don't it, know what that's why we want to do. I just, I just picked it up in one of the pulp magazines. I just, it's just, uh, just familiar to me. That's all. Does your faculty with languages extend to numbers, Mr. Laramie? Could these well, I was, I was good at ciphering. What you got? Uh, these, these numbers that were found in the place. Scrolled, well, scrolled on a wall, if I remember correctly. It was you that found them, wasn't it, Mr. He, yeah, but here's what's funny. I've been thinking about them. You turn them upside down and look at what it spells. It ain't numbers. It's instructions. Excellent. So if I can push you towards that, uh, we've, we've, we've explained lots of clues. The question that you need to answer is yeah. what circumstances will cause someone photographed by the camera to disappear? Um, so we've got a few things bubbling on. Do you want to try and all that together and summarize, and then someone can make the role, and we'll see if we can resolve it. 
it seems it seems obvious to me, although you learned gentlemen may have to correct me, that the ho- camera is less of a threat as the situation in which it is used. And all of this, this we see is all attempts to make the situation correct. Words, the numbers, perhaps they manipulate how people think and the substances, the smells manipulate how people feel. Perhaps the camera is less the threat than the operator. The camera is a focus at all. Just like one of Mr. Mr. Laramie's pistols on its own, left on the table, will not fire a shot, but in his expert hand, lethal weapon. Indeed, quite so. And I'll go and select one, Tom's, and, and put it on the table. And there's a, a, a picture of someone with a staff with a crystal on top and inverted Perfect. pyramid, perhaps. We've got to see them. A tripod camera is one thing, but it could be anything as long as the device is held in the right place as a focus and then the operator can bring everybody together and concentrate and perform the correct rights. That's what causes it. The camera is merely a contemporary object, which in the old days would perhaps be something more prosaic. Not everybody <laughs> could be in on the rights. Perhaps does only the operator have to know, and this is all a manipulation to have them take an unwitting part in the right? No, I completely agree. Completely agree. And I think the final thing is, is to have the right energies in place, right? And you start, you see me just moving the crystal closer to the pyramid, farther from the pyramid, closer to the pyramid. Okay. Yeah. So I love that idea that it's all circum, it's all circumstance and setting and that uh, the, the camera is actually not, n- not itself special. It's, it's, piecing it all together from a timing, from a, uh, a focal point. Uh, I love it. I think it's great. Yeah, I think there's an exactitude to it, which is why the camera doesn't take someone every night. Getting it right, right that delicate balance, getting the right people, the right time, the right tone. Yep. Excellent. Sometimes by accident and now increasingly by design. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Use it. Excellent. It sounds like you have those circumstances. We don't need to nail them exactly down, um, but you've got an idea that there's there are such circumstances. Um, and in the fiction, obviously, last night at the party... Um, two people got taken um, and nearly three so clearly it takes a number of people it takes some you know people were inebriated and speaking in tongues and so on so we've got an idea of some of those um, so I think it's probably time for someone to roll isn't it? yeah I think it needs to be Miss Williams I think she's the one that brought it all together okay I will I will shoulder this responsibility um, I think it's we're on 2d6 plus 4 we? we are yes. Dice say nine. Best result. So that as the answer is correct, and the opportunity can be pursued, um, but the keeper will add an unwelcome complication to the answer, and/or pursuing the opportunity will be more dangerous. Um, Want to spend a mask to get our? Yeah, let's upgrade down. this thing. Yeah, I'll put on a mask of the past. Um, so, Second one. So <laughs> again, we're gonna. You get an idea of the upgrades that yeah. you're the upgrades, my upgrades that you're missing um, with this. I think we see, um, I think we just see a, 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 a another sort of party assembling, guests starting to arrive, and tables mm-hmm. being laid at the um, society. Um, and we see the flash of a picture being taken um, and a photograph slowly developing. And it's Periwinkle, the houseboy from that, and Kip. Um, dressed up in a nice little waistcoat and uh, tight um, pose there. Um, and I think there's another one that comes through. The guests are all having their photographs taken as they arrive. Um, there's another one that's uh, D.I. Pettigrew in his tweed with his uh, moustaches there. Um, as, and another one is the, uh, is the fortune teller that, that Mrs. Williams went to as well. Um, and so all of these sort of um, um, complicating factors are assembling at this party. But... That doesn't happen if you put on the mask. Um, do we want to do? I think probably we should do the flashbacks now, so we can Great. go through that. If that makes, sense. and then we'll mm-hmm. we'll talk through about how we're going to do the resolve the threat. Um, do you want to go first? Anyone? I've got two. So if you want me to do one, then rotate back around, and I'll and do my second. Two, two, yeah. Um, so my first one is narrate a flashback to your youth showing what an arrogant, willful uh, brat you were. 
Um, I think we see a scene back with my tutor, uh, the woman that was hired um, to teach me. And in a series of, of, of uh, time lapse, there's less of her talking, more of me talking. And finally, we see me teaching her. Uh, me showing her what this means and, and and bringing books to her that she that I want to focus on that are way above my age level. And uh, in the flashback, there's me uh, interrupting my father in his library as he's uh, kind of going through the inventory from the plantation and uh, just walking up to him and going up. And now, now Paul, um, we're going to need need someone different. I have outgrown. Miss Smith, and uh, I, I am now officially smarter than she is. So uh, I think we might need to uh, look into hiring somebody new and just let her go on and be. So I, I, I think the out of sheer a- a- arrogance and brattiness, I have her fired uh, for doing nothing wrong, um, but uh, not being able to keep pace with me. Lovely, lovely. Um, Gas, do you want to take the next? Uh... Yeah, I know another scene involving a tutor, definitely enough, a flashback from a childhood with my first encounter with a dark entity. But it's when my overly strict uh, Greek instructor or languages tutor has been trying to teach me Greek, which I find tedious. I want to go back to the Latin because I have books that I need to read about that. And as he's left me to say, when I come back, you best have all this down. I'm looking in the mirror across, cursing muttering under my breath, and my image changes to one of a dark shadow. And although you don't hear the other side of the conversation, you see the small child having a, a conversation says, yes, I'll, I'll pay that price. I'll pay anything to be rid of this horrible man. And outside you hear someone slipping and falling down the staircase <laughs> of Flint Whistle Manor. <laughs> Lovely shade. So mine is uh, Mask of the Past, and I a flashback to your young adulthood before you were a servant that shows what a charmed life. Uh, so uh, a bit of a contrast to the last one. Um, and we see uh, the erstwhile misfits, now Mrs. Williams, married to Mr. Frank Williams, who was the son of the landowner whose um, business was saved by uh, found earlier. She is now um, the, uh, the, the manager at the legal office um were you know subordinate only to her lawyer employer um they have decided that uh, she's going to carry on working for a while before they have a family and they live in a very nice house on the edge of her father-in-law's property and almost um so we see a, a sort of smash cut montage of idyllic mornings and evenings of them sort of having breakfast together uh, a, a kiss off to work return evenings by the fire or out walking um everything's perfect enough. Beautiful. Um, Craig, do you want to do your second one now? Yeah, second one is narrate a flashback to your young adulthood that shows the incident that made you start to resent, even despise your parents. Um, I am late teens. It uh, We're again back at the plantation, though we're out in one of the field houses. And as I'm trying to find trying to find dad because I want to talk to him about a, a few things that I've been learning, I come around behind one of the workhouses and I see him in the process of beginning to beat one of the workers. Um, he's got a, uh, a, a, a kind of a large stitch branch in his hand and one of the workers is, is, is knelt down. And as he comes up to break the first lash, I grab his wrist and I say, father, this ain't how we do things anymore. This ain't how it's going to be. And on my belt, I've got a small bag, and we can see the spine of the book in there of uh, Confucius, uh, the teachings of Confucius, which I think is what's influencing my belief in inequality and, and in fairness and kindness. And my father refuses to change the structure of things on the plantation that leads me to leave. Lovely, lovely. Some proper past. Um, moving to the present now, um, I just need to get from you what your plans are for the night phase in a minute. You can either choose to reverse the process to bring Penelope back, or you can, cho- you can transport yourselves 
or some of you to the fragrant void to make contact with the entity there. Um, you might want boss? to discuss this plan, and then when we go to the <laughs> night phase, we'll sort of say what, what what's it. So a, a basic idea of your plan, because you now know how to resolve this threat and bring Penelope, and if you want Pierre and Cyrus back, um, although Penelope is the one that you're really interested in. If it's all right with the two of you, I feel like we have figured out the circumstances and understand kind of the machinations of how all the gears work together. And I think we figure out, well, if we put this here, if we say this backwards, we're able to pull somebody back out uh, from this uh, in the presence of the camera. We need certain people in the right places in the room, right time of night, the whole kind of thing. So I feel like we, we need to set up that situation in the house um, by 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 will or by uh, charm or by force uh, to kind of to get the the lines all to cross correctly. Um, and then I'll leave it up to Flinty to decide whether <laughs> he wants to jump. Yeah, well, there's, um, I don't know whether it's a dream light sequence or something, but like algernon has got dreams of going to the perfume realm, but he doesn't, he won't do it unprepared. He felt like he's being dragged in and doesn't, Things he does are of his own choice. Mm. He makes devil's bargains, but only on his own terms. So uh, he's, he's considered the options, thinks it's worth bringing the actress back so then he can pump her for information about what the other side's like to prepare himself for when he finally goes. But so, yeah, so externally, he's like, oh, we should bring her back. Yes, of course. That's that's the moral thing to do. And <laughs> be, be saying it as if he's all very altruistic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, ancient demonic entity. Oh yeah, is there one? Oh, I've forgotten all about that. Yeah, yeah, no interest in <laughs> yeah. such things. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Oh, I've forgotten. You must save that poor girl's soul. Yeah, I'm not interested in those. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Um, so, moving towards the night move. Before we do that, there is one move that needs to be made. Craig, isn't there? As uh, the moon rises high in the sky. Um, do you want to just explain that move for the purpose of the viewers? Yeah, it's my quickening it? move. Uh, I live with a curse that causes you to become savage, even feral, at the point where your body physically changes. At the start of the dusk phase, roll with composure or sensitivity, your choice. We have already established that I have um, not optimized this character because I have a zero in both, so it's going to be a straight roll. Unlike before, though, we've got double... Oops, you can't see that. Double six action. I rolled a 12. So on a 10 plus, your body is stronger and faster and you manage to keep the quickening in check. You'll, you roll with advantage when taking actions that use vitality until the next dawn phase. So I'm quite attuned. Yes. Actually better. It was worth yep. staying in last yep. night. Well, fantastic. So night falls. Um, as a reminder, the night um, phase um sort of belongs to me as Keeper. Um, I control the pacing. I sort of decide what happens. You can tell me now what your plan is individually and collectively, um, but how that resolves will determine on the moves. And as a default, of course, we tend to use the night moves rather than the day moves. So whatever you say you're afraid of happening, I make it worse. Um, so do you want to just go around and declare what your role is in this plan? I think it's you're trying to reverse the... Um, Reverse the uh, the the ritual. We've established that there is a party again tonight at yep. the uh, townhouse in in Kensington. Just re these don't these aren't necessarily consecutive nights, by the way. Probably that has been. So there's a, there's a party in in, in Kensington. Um, what sort of thing are you each going to do? What's your role in the play? I'll take care of gathering the people. So by by charm or force, I will make sure that the right people are in the room and in the right spots. Um, if the two of you can take care of everything else. I feel from the spiritual side of pulling the magical trigger, that's definitely in Algernon's wheelhouse. But he can do other setup stuff as well if needed. And I think I'm going to be with the staff, all the people who attended the party who have made, keeping them out of the way because so, some of the staff of the society and need to be in on this for all the setup. Trying to keep them out of the way and sabotage the scenes. Excellent, excellent. And we'll break it down a little bit because I think we've established in the fiction enough that there's quite a specific set of circumstances that we need to reverse this. So it's gathering people, it's getting them to say the right words backwards, and it's, I think, didn't we say that it's the creature that you're speaking is many tongues, so you need people to be saying different things 
Yep. So there's going to be some weird sing along that someone's going to have to lead um, from there. And yeah, the tables we've got and the mirrors have to be in the right place um, and all of that. I won't make you do the whole getting access to the party. We'll assume that um, you're able to get in and we'll start sort of in medias res with the party in full flow, if you like. Um, but night falls first. The first thing that we do in order to pace this is we move across to St. Thomas's Hospital. We have an unseen elsewhere in London that we may have some shadows in the night. Um, Shane, you're going to take the first um, scene from this. This is unconnected to art scene in Kensington, um, except potentially symbolically. Um, so we see sitting across the Thames from the Palace of Westminster, St. Thomas's Hospital is London's newest hospital, purpose built the most modern standards of medicine. It consists of sprawling wings joined by covered walkways, allowing convalescent patients to take the air during the day. But at night, as now, a skeleton crew struggle to save their charges from the illness, accidents, and violence that stalks the gloom. Jane, do you want to take over with the first scene? A destitute woman in the throes of a complicated birth, water holding her down while a surgeon prepares to operate. How do we know the child will never birth mother? Because mm. the camera is seeing this in through one of those small glass windows door to the operating room. Sat outside the operating room is the housekeeper of uh, a rich family. A rich, well, a rich couple cannot have children of their own. And she sits ready to take the squalling infant birth, spirited away to the home where it was. Very nice. Very nice. Beautiful. Back in Kensington, the, um, the stars and stripes have been stripped down. There's a more traditional attire here. Um, they do seem to have hung mirrors everywhere, where once they were covered. Um, last night, Mr. Flint Whistle, when you were there, they were covered. But now all rooms seem to have um, mirrors everywhere. And you can see that the main room that you are, that the party is being hosted in, is... Maharaja's Palace Room. Um, this is used for artistic photography and is decorated as a Maharaja's Palace with a huge crystal encrusted um, elephant in one corner. But as we zoom in on the scene, um, young Periwinkle is climbing atop to have his picture taken. Um, we see the revelers from last night. It's very much the same kind of people that we saw um, in their most outrageous fashions and moving amongst this throng is Mr. Flintwistle and Mr. Larrabee. Um, we see Portia Abernathy come up to you. Uh, we're going to start with you, Craig. Um, so, oh, I'm so glad you were finally able to come. Could you not make it last night, uh, Mr. Larrabee? No, it's kind of, kind of tied up. Um, uh, listen, ma'am, um, I know that you kind of have your normal thingy that you do here. Um, and we, we, we've kind of kind of sussed out exactly how all of this works. Um, unfortunately, and you see me pull out some papers, I'm going to change the script a little bit. So I'm going to need you to read this and I need you to help me make sure that everybody else reads these. I'm going to be handing out these and I, and I need everybody to, to kind of line up for me. All right. And uh, we'll start with you, but not your normal little sing song. It's you, This is what you need to be saying here, what we got written here. Mr. Larrabee, the American party was last night, not tonight. We did all of that for you. Um, so you're going to try and try and persuade her, I think, to try and yeah. do this. So this is going to be a night move um, with presence. Um, you're trying to get her to sort of change some of the, the things that they're doing. You seem to be assuming that she's in on it, which is, which is good. I'll take that. Let's, let's put that in the face <laughs> that she knows what she's doing. I like that. Um, what are you afraid will happen if you fail or lose your nerve? Um. That she will, she will pretend to to do as I ask. But at the moment, the critical moment where she is to read her part, she is not going to read what I've written on that paper, and it's going to cause the entire thing to fail. Um, yeah, it's worse than that as well. In that, she will insist on taking full charge of this, um, like speaking thing but she's going to take mm -hmm. all your papers away Ooh. um pack you off to another room to get photographed because that's that's what they wanted to do originally um and she will do all that organization so you may not even realize that, she, that she's changed it um do you want to make that roll with presence then 
Yeah, I'll do it with presence. I can't come up with a reason why um, my uh, increased faculties will help here, so it will not be with advantage as much as I would like to do that. But I do have a plus two in presence, so um, <laughs> which is good because that turns my three into a five, which is not helpful. <laughs> it's good. It's the same <laughs> result. Um, yeah, she says. Um, she says no. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Larrabee, the American party was last night. Look, we simply must photograph you. And before you know it, there are two of these party goers are taking you through into the American West room that they have in the townhouse oh, there, goodness. where we see set up a range of mirrors and a camera out there. And um, we see now, if you could sit on that, maybe place one of these funny hats on, um, and you're, you're being held down securely as you're being readied for the, the photograph. Um, I'll take care of this as she takes all this. <laughs> Lovely. Um, go on. And I'm imagining, like, I'm I'm trying to like a, a, a exert my my will here, and I keep I keep falling short. And part of it is because I'm so drawn to these mirrors, and there's there's a, there's this part of inside of me that kind of wants to do this, and I don't like that. I don't like th I don't like things inside me that 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 are I'm I'm trying to contain. Yeah. But I will put on a I am going to put on a mask of the okay, past okay. because I I need this to succeed. Uh, go for it. So, um, I think she will. Yeah, I think that happens. I think I'm going to make it happen as described, except that the two men that try and sort of manhandle you out are, are certainly not up to the job of manhandling you, Mr. Larrabee, in your like knight knighthood state with your bestial strength. And you're able quite subtly to just shuffle them off. Um, and stay there with her as she says um, as I said we must uh, photograph you and they're like look there's an awkward pause and she says uh, that, that can be later where did you say people needed to stand as she's looking through her papers and obnoxiously I have pulled my pistol out and instead of pointing with my finger uh, I'm pointing with the gun I'm saying well I'll need the first one here I need the other one there. And then I need, and I keep referring it back to her and I need you pointing the gun in her face to make sure he's there and she is there. Do you understand? And I'm being very obnoxious about pointing the gun at her. Yeah. And I think while you're doing this, the two that tried to manhandle you, we just see them sort of sneak off back into the servants quarters. Um, speaking of the servants quarters, Mrs. Williams, uh, where are you and what are you trying to do for your distraction? Well, some of the servants of the society, are getting out the special mirrors and bits and bobs. I am attempting to uh, keep them distracted as long as possible. So I'll be in the um, in the quarters, and every so often one of them will come in and sort of give the nod to go and get something. I will try and waylay that one of them. And we're talking earlier about the horses. Look, I have a sure thing for tomorrow. Um, and it's excellent. Just hold this, hold these two mirrors. Don't don't make the panes touch, though. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want that to happen. <laughs> like <laughs> and, no, and I'll, and I'll take out one of my betting papers that I have, and I'll hold it up onto the mirror and go, "Look here, you see, you were talking earlier about this horse," and 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 just try and slow them down. Basically, excellent. excellent. So night, nightmare with presence. What are we afraid could happen if you fail? Uh, I am afraid that. Um, my, I am already touched by the fragrant void slightly, and as I'm getting myself close to these items, I'm afraid it will be so much worse. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, and that's not going to give you disadvantage just yet. You're touched by the fragrant void. Um, yeah, but I think that the, the mirrors are going um, it, to is the issue as well as the reflection of this betting mm. strip is going to um, trigger the real ritual a little bit while those mirrors come in there. So go on, make make your roll with presence. Um, and I would like to use those betting slips from my quarters. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. Is there advantage, yeah? Advantage. <laughs> well done. Uh, and that presence is... Uh, hit me with it, but I'm going to put a mask on. <laughs> Go for it. Um, so, yes, these... Um, yeah, six to one, five to three, seven to eight... Nine to four, and we see we see a reflected hand in the mirror, and another hand come out, and then another hand reach out um, and and grab you, and then 
we just see the betting slip fall to the floor. Mm. Mrs. Williams is nowhere to be seen. So, well, we've better move these mirrors to the place, haven't we? Uh, well, I'm going to put on a mask of the past. I'm ready to flash back to the event that eventually forced you into servitude. Mm. It's a few years on from the last flashback, and um, what could possibly go wrong has come to happen. The village has been terrorized over the last year or so by um, initially missing animals or animals that have been related and then missing people. Last, a young child was taken um, in the center of the village on the full. And um, eventually, Mr. Flint was sort of sent for, not young Mr. Flint, so old Mr. Flint. And he came into town with his entourage and his knowledge. And we see him sat at the, um, across the obviously happy breakfast table from Mrs. Williams, she's in tears as he tells her in no uncertain terms that she knows who the threat is and she is hiding him. And that it is her duty to the community and her duty to what is good in the world. See, Very nice. (laughs) Well done. (laughs) Lovely. Um, yeah you are so it's a you managed to delay them in some cases but i think part of the deal is that you're moving these mirrors up and so you you have to sort of stand in place in this room between the two mirrors and you're actually in the in, in, in the room with everything being touched by the void as well um gas everything seems to be in order ready for your reverse ritual to take place and whistle um can you pull it off, though? Yes. That's what's that any further question. Oh, well, well, well. <laughs> Thanks for asking. <laughs> um, do, do you want to just, just just what does this sort of thing? Are, are you are you the sort of mastermind behind getting like, everything in in place and trying to do it? Uh yes. It's about um, yeah. We, we sort of kind of got some people in place, and we've kind of got some. Arrangements, but there's still there's going to be some people, certainly amongst the upper classes, who are reluctant to do what they're told and want mm. to do what they're used to and stick with tradition and stuff. So I feel I've got to do a kind of mixture of perhaps with some of the ladies, a seance with tarot cards and with the men, a game of whist to beat them and go you like a forfeit, that. make them have to go and do this thing they don't want to do and that kind of thing. <laughs> so I've got a variety of different card games I'm presenting around the place. To sort of dare them into to... doing the lovely, lovely. Yeah, I'll get the old public schoolboy thing of like you have to do a forfeit now. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you have to stand on the chest looking backwards and <laughs> sing this song and all that kind of stuff. Sing this song backwards <laughs> in, <laughs> in this strange deadline. In this mirror. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Trust me, it'll be a hoot. Um, okay, um, so that will be a roll with presence, I think, because you're trying to Good, okay. distract people. I don't think you've got any conditions that are relevant to harder for you. Um, what no. you're worried will go wrong if you. Uh, uh, that, that I, I end up losing a card, so I end up stood on a chair backwards singing something the wrong way to shut the back. No, show us how he's done, Al, you know, we don't understand. Like, oh, God, right. I think, yeah, and you'll definitely, I think it's worse because you'll definitely, that, that will be the only opportunity for you to go through with it. You will have yeah. to be very much a part of the ritual and at that yeah. much as risk as everyone else. And m- make the role then. Let's well, I'm going to bring in one of my items and use my deck of marked cards yeah. that was presented to me earlier. So. Yes. Uh, It's 12 of 12. Fantastic. So, yeah, we see a montage of various upper class uh, upper class gentlemen standing backwards on chairs with their hats on backwards being handed um, from Porsche the the new um, thing that they need to they need to sing to make it work as the camera is unveiled let's go back to the hospital now and see what's happening in there craig do you want to do the second part of the unseen i do in the casualty waiting room the experienced ward sister mary o'brien triages the sick and wounded who does she see and will they live or die i think we see um our little scamp 
uh, that, uh, Kip uh, but, but yeah, I think we're seeing Kip maybe two years younger and he, um, is coughing up blood and seems to be, uh, somehow consumed with consumption. And the answer to the question is, will they live or die? Um, Kip, we know will live. Um, but I think it's going to be because of a trinket that was given to him uh, at some point by Miss Williams. And despite uh, Nurse O'Brien's best efforts, it is actually something that's beyond medicine uh, that pulls Kip through. Lovely, lovely. It's even worse that he's smoking now, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> it's even more shocking. Um, <laughs> So back in the room, I'm going to go to you, Mr. Flintwistle, first, because the ritual is about to be completed. Um, you have managed, you luckily are not stood backwards on a chair, but you're uh, demonstrating to people how they need to rotate um, Widdishins thrice and uh, read the, the script that they have. Um, I, you maybe don't see, but we certainly see that behind one of the mirrors is Mrs. Williams um, still adjusting it, uh, maybe trying to get get out of the way, but but maybe not sure if she can. Um, and I think, Mr. Larrabee, you're in the same room as well. It's as if, it's as if as you watch, you can't leave. The mm -hmm. mirrors and the, the cameras unveiling um, make you as if you were drawn to the void, in fact. Um, so we're going to go to you, um, Gaz, first. Mm -hmm. Flint Whistle, of can you, can you enact the reverse ritual successfully this is going to be a role with sensitivity mm -hmm. um i i will ask you although it sort of goes I can imagine what you're going to say what are you afraid will happen if you fail or lose your nerve <laughs> uh i'm afraid i'm afraid i'll lose my servant the missus <laughs> <laughs> the other the other players the other player yeah, characters yeah. will die <laughs> everyone else <laughs> except for you yeah no. uh yeah uh I, i'm afraid that yeah, only parts of me will go through. So, like my, you know, my soul or whatever, or my spirit, my ineffable aura gets pulled through. But I stay behind, if you know what I mean. So, I'm, rather than being on one side or the other, I'm separated between the two worlds. So I like implicit in that that despite agreeing that we go reverse the process and bring Penelope back, you're actually going to go and contact the entity. Is that, is that what's happening now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't want to, but it might. I'll start the ritual cats. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, it is worse than that um, because, yeah, I, I like that part of you will go through and part of it won't. Um, I think it's better and worse than that in that you will you will actually return some of the people that have been taken, um, but but the entity will demand a price, so it will take people in their stead. Mm. Um, I can't possibly think which two people in the room uh, might be the first people, people that, <laughs> that would be a risk random. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, would you like to roll with sensitive? I'd love to. I'm going to resist putting my threadbare tea cosy on my head as well to try and clear it out for dice. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. uh, so I've got an eight. I've got a ten with sensitivity. So as predicted, um, we see the um, flash of the camera and the lens go and as the sort of smoke clears there's that smell of warm spices that we previously established happens here as we look into the room mr flint whistle vanishes everyone stood on chairs in fact everyone in the room just begins to float slightly and a strange humming fills the air and your, you notice, Mr. Larrabee, with your linguistic knowledge, that the, the chanting that you can hear now, and indeed it is the same chanting that Mrs. Williams can hear, is, is in the correct order. It's not being reversed. Mm -hmm. You can hear. And from the mirrors, you both feel drawn as if something is wanting more wanting more from you. I'm going to make you both roll. And this is the night scene. I'm going to make night I'm going to make you both roll to try and avoid being sucked into the fragrant void at this point, because we, we, we're both in that room. Um, it's going to be with sensitivity. Um, go to you first, Mr. Irby. What are you afraid will happen if you fail to? Well, I'm going to ask a question, uh, which is, can I try to resist this? Not with, 
um, my will, but with my, f- like, physically resist this. Can I make an argument for vitality? Uh, you can, but let's call back to the last session when Mr. Flintwistle avoided being sucked into the fragrant void by putting somebody else in. Mm-hmm. You can, but that'll mean somebody else will be. A success means one of the other party goers will, will be taken. Yeah, I th- I think... Um... Wasn't really wasn't really a big fan of being manhandled. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is is offer up one of the goons yeah. that uh, tried to physically escort me before out of there and and put him uh, uh, in here instead. Excellent. Excellent. So, so I appreciate it. So what you with vitality? Of get, uh, what am I afraid going to happen? Is that um, I get distracted and at the last minute um, he does not. He he's able to actually. At the last minute, his the other goon pulls him away, um, and so I'm unsuccessful because his brother, who is the other goon, uh, saves him at the last minute. I think I think it's it's worse because it's the other goon um, has already tried mm. to manhandle you. They're not messing around now. When they went back to the servants' quarters, they came back with uh, they came back with carving knives just yeah. to make sure. So it's you, you might still be pulled into the void. You'll be pulled in with a with a knife in you as well. Um, so go ahead and make your vitality roll. I would give you um, disadvantage on this because you are drawn to the drawn void. To the void. Um, but your vitality thing gives you advantage so they cancel. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, right? Um, so the two will cancel each other out. Yeah. I'm physically stronger because of the quickening. Uh, there's an 11. And with my vitality, that's a 12. Fantastic. Do you want to describe what this looks like as um, we see the goons coming up with the knife and you are drawn um, into the mirrors? It happens very, very quickly uh, where I'm I'm feeling myself drawn. I grab the back of the nap of the, the one of the goons and start pulling him. And as I'm pulling him in, I'm seeing his arm swinging around trying to stab me in the stomach. And it is it's 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 violent because I grab the wrist and not only stop it, but I break his arm in the process. His entire forearm cracks. We see the bone come out exposed as I just throw him into the mirror. Okay. And there's like a spray of blood on the other side of the mirror as we look through at this thing falling back into it. Meanwhile, Mrs. Williams, you are floating and you're floating towards one of the length mirrors. So. Um, Mrs. Williams has seen her fair share of weird situations, with her, but she's never really been one magic and understanding it, and it puts her in a very uncertain. Um, so she is just going to try and grab on to somebody and try and keep herself. Self. Okay, so same deal as 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 we had with. Um... Mr. Lyra, but you can roll with vitality instead of sensitivity, but that will mean that somebody else gets sucked in. Um, you will be rolling at disadvantage because of your condition by the void as well. So one of my um one of my moves, the informals, the one that brought Kip on into um I would I would like to ask if I could have prepositioned barrel staves, hooligan, the staff, an absolute unit here mm-hmm. and definitely big and strong enough to stop me from floating away um would it be possible to that move i'm i think i'm going to say no in the night phase because mm. right it's sort of okay. it, it it happens at, at a faster sure. pace than that that no problem would have been set up from there but no, no problems in which case uh, i shall get a six so you grasp towards um, one of the other servants near you and just think, I think maybe you take a glove with you, but we just see this uh, mirror taken through and we see, um, we see on the other side Mrs. Williams stand staring as if through a, as if through a small window. Um, at, I, I would like to from ask. <laughs> yeah, I thought you might. Uh, I'm going to use a mask of the future, mm. the darkened threshold. Um, narrate a scene in which you commit a terrible act of violence in order to punish one of them. And this is very much looking to something that could happen in the future, right? Yeah. Uh, so we um, we see 
a very disheveled looking Mrs. Williams. Other other figures blurry in the background moving. One of them tall, um, taller than the other. Perhaps Mr. Larrabee and her employer, perhaps not. And we see uh, Mrs. Williams barring the door and lighting the fire that will burn down this. Nice. And so that puts it up to a, a mixed success. It does. Yeah. And as established, somebody will have to be um, sacrificed to the fragrant void. Um, I think um, I think there's, you can do this, but there's going to be a scuffle involved here. You're going to have to really manhandle someone and obviously behave in a manner which uh, Mr. Flitwistle's probably seen you um, do such, but the rest of the guests are going to be quite taken aback, um, even given the strange things that are going on at a, um, some of the lower classes, such as yourself, um, getting one of these noblemen in a headlock and, uh, and wrestling them towards the, the, yeah. the mirror. And Mrs. Williams is not a large or powerful woman, so it's going to have to be somebody who is frail. Mm. I mean, we've got Periwinkle, haven't we? The, uh, the lovable oh. houseboy. Not for much longer. <laughs> <laughs> Here, let me help you, Mom. Ah, she's throwing him into the. Uh... Yeah. And for those watching, they see all the all the kind of pretense of geniality, even you know the stern geniality dropped from Mrs. Williams' face, and she just utterly cold calculating as she times it just to push Barry Wink. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, everything going really well so far? Sort of. Uh, back at the hospital, Gaz, do you want to talk to us about the, um, the next part? Sure. The young nurse, Agnes Powell, walks the TB ward, silent, but for the laboured breathing and hacking coughs of her charges. How do we, who do we see, sorry, amongst the gaunt, pale patients that shows death respects neither age nor rank? And as the camera pans through the dark ward with its cacophony of ill noises, in the wan light, we see something familiar. We've seen this face somewhere before, but it looks older now. And then we realise that it's Mr. Flintwistle, the elder. Mm. Brought low and coughing with disease, his eyes gaunt. He just about manages to pull himself up to whisper something into the nurse's ear before he falls back, wheezing, and says, whatever you do, don't tell my son. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, so back, everyone was floating. We see suddenly people fall to the ground now, and a general panic ensues as Porsche's screaming, that's not, that's not how it's meant to happen. That's not it. Stop, they've, they've done it. We must bring Cyrus back. Smash the, smash the mirrors, smash the mirrors. That'll bring him back as uh, rushing around the room. Um, we see, um, well, the, the one remaining heavy, one remaining goon, and the rest of these uh, sort of inebriated noblemen seem to be smashing the, the one gate that they know leads to this fragrant void. Um, it's almost as if they are like enraged and possessed by, by this um, thing. As, as we do it, I, th I think we've established that you can all notice that Mr. Flintwistle is indeed on the other side, is floating in the fragrant void. Eventually we'll cut off his last means of escape. Um, Mr. Larrabee, what do you do? I'm starting to shoot people. <laughs> so um, not just pointing um, my weapon. And it is, it's, it's with a, it's, it's, a, it's almost like a ballet. Um, uh, very, very uh, efficient, timed and smooth. And it's just boom, boom. And as, 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 as they start approaching these mirrors, I'm 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 firing my gun and taking them out one at a time. Hopefully, there's not more than six of them. Excellent. So, when you say efficient, timed, and smooth, I think your dice might want to have something to say about that. Fair. <laughs> um, <laughs> we do it. I think this is probably going to be a composure move. Um, I'm, night move. What are you afraid will happen if you fail or lose your nerve? Um, I'm afraid that I'm going to end up um, breaking, uh, actually helping them versus. Them so I think that a bull, a stray bullet will will break the last mirror. I I'm going to make it worse in a. Sorry, it's too easy to do it. 
Um, not only will you break um, mirrors, I think a shot is going to hit Mrs. Williams. Well, put that batch it up. Um, so make your composure move. I don't think you'd a disadvantage or anything here. I think. Yeah, let me look. Um, I would like to do this at, at advantage using my antique dueling pistol. Um, uh, uh, from my uh, that you guys gave me. So with advantage, we have an eight. Do it a whole save as a complication or cost to keep it what it looks. Um, I think that you are going to be able to prevent the mirrors being smashed. Um, but in the course of this um, shooting, you are going to be overwhelmed and dragged off out of the room. That's mm. okay with you, if you're okay to go with that, um, by some of the servants. Um, they were There was general pandemonium, but when someone pulls out a gun and starts shooting, you immediately become the, the target. And the people that are less panicked see you as the thing to to, to resolve it. So you're going to stop. I the become the threat. Yeah, but, um, you are you are dragged off um, into the um, in, into the servants servants sort of quarters, and we see a we see a door slam behind behind us as we do that. I'm also going to give you a condition: bruised, bruised. Got it. From there, um, Mrs. Williams. Um, the mirrors started to be smashed, but then Mr. Larrabee opened fire. Um, you managed to avoid being shot here, but there is still some general sort of pandemonium there. Um, you also see that the um, Porsche is rushing towards the camera to try and um, to try and sort of take control of it. Um, and so we must we must bring them back. We must bring them back. Um, what do you do? Well, knowing that the camera is not but a tool. And the situation has been already somewhat disturbed. I'm focused solely on my employer, um, and uh, having just wrestled slightly with young Periwinkle, um, looking and a little dishevelled from from all of that, I'm going to uh, scoop down and grab up a shard of glass from one of the broken mirrors. I'm going to run it across my palm, smear blood on the mirror that um, Mr. Flint Whistle is in. <laughs> And just say, you know, come back to me. Follow the blood. Algernon, you must. You must. Excellent. So you're going to try and create a route back out. Mm. Um, what, could, what could go wrong? Well, you tell me what you're afraid will happen. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm af- uh, what I'm afraid of is that I will end up swapping places with him, which to Mrs. Williams would be worse than be, than both being trapped in there because – she she made a deathbed promise to his father to look after him, and that would have her break her word. Something she, but for her, swapping places is worse than just being so. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so it's going to be sensitivity. This strong point. <laughs> sure it is. Yes, <laughs> nobody's strong point apart from the best. Can I leverage for advantage because I'm touched by the void and I'm trying to create a route? You don't, get, okay. you don't get advantages for conditions that are negative, right? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't given you disadvantage for it, though. You haven't, which is good. That's fair. 11. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay, yeah. So that happens as described. Um, we are now in the fragrant void. Um, Mr. Flint Whistle, you are floating forwards towards... Sort of loosely defined tentacled creature with a single glowing eye in the center of it. We see behind you a little rectangle open up the mirror as a way out has been opened for you. Um, but as you float towards this creature and see already encased in its tentacles are Cyrus, Pierre. Yeah. Um, Penelope Levy. Um, they seem to be vaguely still alive um, and at peace. Um, but there's also two other characters like floating towards it who look less at peace. 
um, <laughs> and, and noiselessly screaming in pain or panic, um, respectively, as they fly towards it. And we see the, the blood from the broken arm just float around in, in, in spheres. And you feel this creature um, reaching towards you to try and take you. Um, what, what are you trying to do? Communicate with it? Or oh, yes. your, what's your deal? Oh, see here, you. We're going to be needing Penelope back. Yes, that one. And we have many things to be discussed, but not right now. For now, I need to bring her back. Then we shall have talks. Oh, you like these, do you? And I'll, like, gesture at the ones floating in. <laughs> oh, I, I can get you many more. Many more. But not that one. That one's mine. You give her back. Yes, for tonight, I'll swap you these two for that one. And then, yes, when the moon rises again, we shall discuss more. I shall bring you more. Don't worry. There's probably a lot you can teach me, isn't there? Which and is I'll, uh, amazing. I'll give some squirts from my cologne bottle because when the fragrant riding, I feel that this creature communicates with the power of smell. So I'll try and reinforce it with some <laughs> French perfume. Lovely, lovely. Um, that is a night move. Um, you're trying to offer these two as sacrifices if you get Penelope out. Clear what's at stake. What are you afraid will happen if you fail or lose your nerve? Uh, that it w- it'll want more of a sacrifice in a true sense. I'm going to have to go and get my friends and bring them in as the sacrifices. That it just, that just, so that'll be a genuine sacrifice. Look, you have no trouble offering us up, do you? <laughs> 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 Terrible story, <I'll> be. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Have you ever wondered why Flint, Flint was the house is so empty of guests with all these rooms? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's worse in the You'll have to do well. You'll do that, and you will also be one of the sacrifices mm. as well. Um, put the stakes on here because this could be this could be the defining moment. This is rolling with sensitivity, <laughs> right? Okay, so that's a five <laughs> with a sensitive with your bonus. That, that's adding the plus two for my sensitivity. <laughs> okay, so we let's play one. the scene. Yeah, before I bring my masks out, which I'm already <laughs> ready. <to. laughs> um, so, yeah, I think I think we get a general sort of humming of ascent from the creature, but you keep floating towards it, um, Mr. Flintwhistle, and the 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 mirror with the blood smeared on it by Mrs. Williams. Um, as you try and pull your hand away from it, you can't. And the whole mirror looks like you're seeing in, and you can see Mr. Flint was there. You can see this creature too. Um, and as you, um, as you try and pull it away, we see you pulled through it and flying quite fast this time towards this thing's one single eye as Penelope Levy is, is released. Um, and you will be there for eternity. Luckily, the Americans Welcome. tied up in another room. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that. That's that's what happens there. Um, go ahead. You're going to put a mask on? Did you mention? Yes, a mask of the past. So uh, get get your X cards at the ready because this narrator flashback to your your adulthood and shows your first sexual encounter with a dark entity. Okay. First sexual encounter with a dark entity. <laughs> yes, oh that's, boy. That's probably, I think, I think so. we said certificate PG at the start, so we did. <laughs> so, yeah. so some of this will be off screen. Really just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think how we'll describe it is: uh, Aldo is in front of one of his full-length mirrors, and there's that darkened shape he talked to before about his tutor. And again, he's having that one-sided conversation, really saying, "Yes, of course, I'd love to." And as this shape sort of steps through the mirror, it's an exact simulacrum of himself which he starts to embrace and kiss. And as he, the two of him, go off towards the bed and out of camera shot, you can see in the background of the mirror this one single eye with drifting tentacles around it watching as you hear the sloppy noises of whatever's going on off camera. Lovely, lovely. And so we'll play the scene again. Um, It's still a mixed success. So there is a complication or cost. Um, And... How, how how to push? When, whenever you think that, you should push it as far as you can. Exactly. Um, 
um, you get a sense that a a sort of whispered voice says, yes, she can go. She can go, but the rest of them, all of them, all of them must stay. And as we see um, a sort of faint Penelope and Mr. Flintwistle climb through this mirror, we see the Kensington House uh, townhouse shake a little. Um, we see the doors and the windows slamming shut and locking. Um, and just we see smoke begin to billow up from the basement as the entity takes its price. Um, nice. I'm conscious of time, but I think we've got one last little escape for the the, the three of us to do. Um, Shane, do you want to do the final um, unseen, and then we'll uh, see if our hunters can paint the scene as dawn begins to break how do we see the staff from us dealing with the stress of the night knowing they will be back again soon Healthcare brings about gallows humor so there are smiles and laughs as a tired staff mixing together in across class boundaries united by the the common sort of the, the common um events of having looked into sickness and death together and they walk away smiling but weary, knowing mm. they did a job well done. But behind it all, behind it all, some of them don't cope quite so well. You know that some of them won't be sleeping until they, some of them, cells in. But for most, it is a, it's a night ending, knowing they did some good. And for others, it's whatever it takes to wash out the good. Beautiful, beautiful. And so the house is on fire. We're going to go first to you, Craig. Uh, Mr. Larrabee, you are tied up in the, um, the servants' quarters before the smell of smoke hits you. Um, and the servants generally attempt to go. You're tied to the, the sort of fire grate here. You can feel the warmth behind you um, doing it. You know that something is happening. and Objects are starting to float as this whole house begins to go. What do you do? Um, as we have learned, I'm very used to being uh, bound in this way, and it 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 ignites in me this the, that power. So I am going to not only break my bonds, but I'm going to take a running leap out of the window, uh, two stories up uh, to land, superhero land out in the street. At least that's what I want to do. Okay, so what are you afraid will happen if you fail losing your nerve? I think that fall is going to be the, the issue, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's it's not the fall that kills you; it's the landing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think um, I have to say, it's, yeah, it's worse than that. But I think, yeah, I think it's going to be the yeah the 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 cart and sort of bins and stuff that you you saw while you were out there. They've they are also a flame now as well. Um, so it's going to be even worse than that. So go ahead and make a vitality roll. You get advantage on this because of your uh, I do. bestial nature. I was imagining the, the movie shot of him landing and then a cart and horse running over him as well. Like, like, <laughs> reverses back. <laughs> yeah. A one, two, and a three. <laughs> so with advantage, that's a four, plus the vitality makes it a five. Um, the advice makes it five, doesn't it? So, I mean, it's still a six, isn't it? So, yeah, I think. No, 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 no. It's four plus one. So, my final is a five. So, after all of that, the advantage and the plus one yeah. to vitality, I still fail. Okay. I think we're going to see you fly out of a window. Um, and there's a sort of sickening thud as you land on the, uh, on the ground there. And we just see the flames lick up at you from there. Um, yeah, let's go back to our fellow um, hunters. You are, the, again, pandemonium is ensuing. Um, you are locked in this house. The, um, you're locked in the house. The windows are locked. The doors are locked. Um, you can smell the smoke coming up from ground. And there's also lots of party goers who are panicking and running around everywhere. I'm going to go to you, Mrs. Williams, because you may be the first to react as you weren't momentarily in the, in the fragrant void before. What do you do? Uh, so I'm going to be grabbing Algernon, dragging him out, assuming that he's sort of temporarily 
sort of discombobulate. Um, and when we reach a door, it's locked. Going to look look around for a housekeeper, somebody with a key, and um, whatever means necessary. I'm from them. Excellent. I think this might be vitality to sort of generally escape. Um, what are you afraid will happen? I guess you guess. Let's uh, get going. You you say that. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm very much afraid that I won't be able to get Algernon. Mm. Uh, yes, it's worse than that. You will be able to get... I think you'll be able to survive. You'll get yourself out, but Algernon yeah. and Penelope Levy as well will be left yeah. behind in the building. Nice to say. She could see this. 13. <laughs> yep. Excellent. Do you want to describe how that how that happens? As you, you uh, so the, the 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 housekeeper is running around trying to put the um the the fire out, and I just sort of um spin spin her around, slap her across the face, snatch the key out of her hand, and and just rush to the door and um unlock it. We we barrel out, and then in a flashback to flash forward earlier. As Algernon is outside, with or without Penelope, that is of no concern to Williams. Um, close the door and lock it. Nice. Find us nice. those degenerates inside. Mr. Flintwhistle, as you emerge outside with Penelope, the, um, it's suddenly a moment of peace. The only noise you can hear, though, is the sort of sucking, um, laboured breathing of um, someone you recognise as Mr. Larrabee. Lying on the ground in front of you, and um, there's an there's a smashed window above him, two <laughs> stories up. Um, um, it, he doesn't look to be in a good way. Mm, uh, oh, yeah, I could go over to him. <laughs> this could go either way. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and as I'm leaning over and examining you, uh, probably more interested in the flow of blood that's across the cobbles than you at first. It seems. And then I snap myself back to the task at hand. I'll uh, I'll whisper in your ear. Do you want do you want to pay the price? Offer kind of offer kind of you, but it's time for me to pay back. Protect the city. I'm going to refuse your help. And I will. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll pull out. One of my arcane devices to capture a departing soul for use later. A very, very, very decent of you. I'll give him a little for pat. And I think our camera just pans vertically upwards, just as we see Mrs. Williams return to Mr. Flintwhistle. Mr. Larrabee expire on the floor, and the flames lick up the Kingston townhouse. And that is the end of the Mystery of the Waitley camera. Let's just briefly sign off from our characters with a short little um, vignette of what we see them doing later on. Um, Craig, use your imagination here. It could be someone related to the Americans. It could be somebody mm -hmm. he's interacted with. It could be another character at all, just to see them after the end of this so we can just sign off where they are. Um, Shane, do you want to go first? Mm, yeah. So. Um... Few days have passed, and Mr. Williams is back to her normal routine of uh, Mr. Flint or so other secrecies. Um, but when she is cleaning the trophy room, she pauses momentarily. Um, werewolf pet, and she places her hand loving and says, Just at the end, that Mr. had the saved him, choose to go. Stand. Well, maybe you can tell me when it's soon, Frank. And then just. Oh, well, Gaz, what do we see of Mr. Flintwhistle? It's probably some weeks later, but he's sat in his room uh, looking into this mirror, which you can't see from the camera angle. And he's got a frown on his face, and next to him, he's got. Um, it's like an hourglass, but instead of sand, it's got blood that's over half in the bottom. 
and he's um, he's in the denial stage at the minute when he's shouting at the merry going, I can't possibly have given you more than half of my soul by now. There's at least two thirds left. And again, it's that one sided conversation where you can't hear what's being said by the entity in the mirror. But he's uh, he's looking somewhat distraught that he's already half gone when you thought he had so much more left. Fantastic, fantastic. And finally, Craig. Total darkness. Um, a featureless floor, no walls, no ceiling. Um, you see me standing, kind of surprised, looking at myself, um, realizing that I have been put somewhere and transported somewhere. My clothes are not like before; they're fine now. They're 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 the clothes I always wished I could have afforded after uh, giving up all of my inheritance from my family and and whatnot, and after going out on my own. And I think I'm at peace with being alone and captured in here until I turn around and I see the sea of other people that are also here and just realize that I did not know my friend, that his deep, dark secret, he is actually horrific because of the collection of souls in his time that he's, that he's taken. Fantastic. And on that note, <laughs> we'll sign off the between. Do check out part one if you haven't already, and then you'll understand what you've just watched for two hours. <laughs> um, and check out our other, uh, check out the game if it's crowdfunding still. Um, you can do it. If not, then you can uh, get a hold of it um, and, and see what it is. It's got some excellent stuff in it. Check out our other games on the channel. Make sure you check out Smart Party, Burn After Running, and Third Floor Wars and Craig's channel um, for excellent games on there. Remember to like and subscribe and let us know in the comments. Um, if you uh, if you're expecting that ending, um, if it went as dark as you thought it would do, um, <laughs> and if you'd like to see any more games like this before, in the meantime, we will sign off and uh, we'll see you very soon. <laughs>